All right, hi guys. I, um, in the previous video, I had mentioned how the uh, Unify algorithm, you know, it wasn't something that you needed to know, you know, intimately, right? I wasn't going to ask you on a test to trace through it or anything like that, or um, you know, to code this thing. So this video that I'm putting together for right now is optional, and you know, I had encouraged you in the previous video to trace through it on your own. Um, but I thought I would just start you off, right, and you know, just kind of give you a simple example um, for Unify running one time, just so you can get a feel for, you know, what's going on. So I put the algorithm up here uh, for reference, okay, and, you know, uh, down underneath it, we've got that ask bars knows John X. So what this is basically saying is, hey, give me all the variables or tell me everybody who knows John, right? And so uh, in the knowledge base, the Unify algorithm would have to run multiple times, right? So here is underneath the ask bars line, here is the results of um, unify being applied every single time, right? So um, by looking at that, we can deduce, you know, what the minimum things must be in the database to get these answers. And by database, I meant knowledge base. Sorry about that. So, you know, we're asking about, you know, knows John X, right? So that's our query. This is our goal. Okay. So knows John X. Okay. Um, so we want to find out about that. This is basically saying, you know, John knows somebody. And we want to ask, well, who does John know? Who, who, who are all the people that John knows? And if this is the answer, right, that Unify is going to have to be called, um, you know, four times. Or according to the answer, it's called four times. And you can see that one answer is Jane for X. One answer is Bill for X and John for Y. Uh, and another is, you know... Um, John for Y and the mother of John for X, and then there's a fail, right? So on the left-hand side, this is what we're trying to figure out. And on the right-hand side, you know, these are all facts that must already have been in the knowledge base, right? For this example to work, right? So let's go ahead and add these entries, uh, John and Jane, okay, and knows um, y comma bill and I'll just go through the first unify and then you can go through and you know reproduce what I did um, if you're interested for the other uh, four results right so you can trace through it and see you know what's uh, going on oops um, that should be knows x Elizabeth sorry I can't think and <laughs> write at the same time apparently uh, Elizabeth, which is a fail. Okay. Um, so what this is saying in our knowledge base, we'd have at least these four sentences. You know, the first one saying John knows somebody. The second one saying John knows Jane. The third one is saying um, somebody knows Bill. And then the fourth one is saying, you know, somebody knows Elizabeth. Okay. So this is a Y here for this fourth line. Okay. So if we were to ask the knowledge base, you know, who does John know? Well, then this unify algorithm would have to go through um, all of the variables in here and trying to find substitutions that could act as a unifier between the nose John X and everything else. Okay, so that would give you a list of all of the unifiers and therefore everybody who knows John, right? And so you'll see when you're doing your prologue programming, this is kind of what happens. Okay, anyway, so let's go through this unify uh, algorithm here. So unify x, y, theta. Theta is the substitution that's built up so far. So that's, you know, um, the unifier as it stands so far. Now, initially, that thing is going to be empty. And so when we pass this unify function, right, we're going, to, we're going to pass unify, label it you here. What are we passing to it uh, initially? Well, X and Y, two sentences that have to try to be unified. So um, we'll go ahead and instead of me writing out no's every single time, I'll just do K, okay? And then um, John will be uh, J and then Jane um, 
I'll do J A. Okay, just so I don't have to write so much. Okay, so that would be the X argument passed to um, Unify, and then the Y argument being passed would be. Um, oops. Sorry, that first one would be John knows someone, right? And then the second one would be um, John knows Jane. Okay, and then the third argument is the substitution, you know, that unifier so far. Initially, that thing is empty, right? So we'll we'll just make a note here that it's it's empty, okay? Now, the unifier function starts executing, and you know if the substitution is failure, then return failure, right? There's no unification. You can't you can't find a solution for it, okay? But this thing initially is empty, so it's not failure. Now you take a look. You say, well, um, the next thing is else if if x is equal to y. Well, it's not, right? Because there's our y right there. Those aren't the same sentences, right? So you kick down. You say, well, um, is x a variable no x is not a variable this is a sentence right it's a compound as the uh, text mentions it in the subtext for this figure in the label for the figure right so is variable y of or is y a variable no right this is also a compound right so those are both compounds so then we go to the else if so is x a compound yes John knows someone, John knows X, and um, is Y a compound? Yes, because John knows Jane, knows, right? So this is, this is what the text refers to as a compound. So then what do we do? Well, we return, and here comes a recursive call, the unification of this stuff right here, right? So in order for, we got a nested unification going on here. So what happens is, is that this calls, right? We're doing a unify right there, okay? We gotta deal with that first, so that way we can resolve what it returns, so that becomes an argument to this unify call right here, right? So it says x.op and y.op, okay? So what does that mean and what's args and args? Well, the op is this part, the nose, the k part, okay? So that means that we're going to call another instance of unify so we can resolve that third argument for this call to unify right here. So we'll call this u, right? So what gets passed to it? x op, y op, and um, our substitution so far. So the arguments being passed to that are k and k. So k and k and the substitution that we have so far, which is empty, right? So now that unify instance starts executing its code. Is uh, theta a failure? No. Um, is x equal to y? Yeah, right? This is the x for that for that unify function instance. And that's the y. Are they equal? Uh -huh. So what do we return? We return the substitution that was passed. Now again, what's that substitution? It's just empty so far. So that leaves memory. And then this unify can go ahead and execute, right? So I'll go ahead and label that as U. Now what's it getting past? It's getting past x.args and y.args. Well, what were the args? J comma x, right? Because the k's got passed. Now there's the first arg. That's the arg for x and that's the arg for y. So get, that gets passed and then Jane uh, or John knows Jane or John and Jane gets passed and then that third argument is the substitution as it's been built up so far so that gets passed to this instance of uh, unify and so then it starts executing its code is that substitution set to failure no is x equal to y now this is the x and this is the y for this instance of the function no so then is x is this x a variable no is this y a variable uh no are they both compounds no 
um, what are they? They're lists, right? So they are both lists. So then what has to happen? Well, this unify is going to return what's returned by this unify right here, right? So we get another instance of that unify that comes into memory, comes into existence. So now what are these arguments here? X rest, Y rest, right? And we got yet another recursive call, okay? Um, so what are the first two arguments getting passed? Okay, to this thing. All right, so first thing that's getting passed is um, X rest. Well, what's X rest? That. What's, at, what's Y rest? That. So we're passing X and jaw. Okay. Um, but we have to have a third argument, which is what? The result of this instance of the function. And maybe I should make my arrow like this, right? Because it's, it's going to be the result of you know, that we had that call from this guy right here and we had to resolve that third argument that was being passed to this new instance of the function. So anyway, um, so what's getting passed to this guy? X uh, first and Y first. Well, what was the first of X? John and John, right? And what was the third argument? The substitution as it's been built up so far, which contains nothing. Okay, so now what does this instance of the function do? Well, it starts executing its code, right? So uh, is the substitution that's been passed, is that equal to failure? No, it's empty. Uh, is x equal to y? Yes. The j and the j are the same. Therefore, return that substitution, All right? So that becomes the third argument to this instance of unify, right? So that instance of unify is dealing with this right here, right? So now this instance starts executing with these arguments, okay? So uh, it goes through, goes through, is the substitution equal failure? No. Um, is X equal to Y? No, because X is not equal to Jane. Okay, so then we go down and we say, well, is variable X, is X a variable, right? Um, yes, it is. X is a variable, right? So then this instance of this function right here is going to return what's produced by unify dash bar. Okay, so I'll label that as U v right so what gets passed to that uh x y and theta okay so that x variable gets passed the jaw gets passed for jane and then the substitutions we have it so far now we jump down to unify var okay and this is going to return a substitution so we're going to get a substitution out of this so let's take a look at the uh, if statements. Okay, so is there some value in variable binding, right? So you take, is there some binding in the substitution for to x already, right? Because that fits for the var right there. Okay, that's the var. Is there some binding in some value in the substitution that we passed that's attached to x? No, right? Because remember the substitution is empty. Right? And so then it checks to see if there's a specific binding um, to X, to the other, the other way around. Is there something bound to Jane? Right? Um, no, because inside the substitution, no, because the substitution is empty. Right? So then we go down to else if occur check. And so what occurred, the occur check function does is tries to see if there is an instance of this variable, you know, say X, uh, that's part of the second variable over here, Jane, and vice versa. Well, they're not. They're they're distinct. There's there's no elements of either in either, right? So we can kick down and skip over the else if down here, 
and then we can look at the else return. So what does this do? This adds to the substitution the x, which is Jane in this point, in this case, to the variable, which, which happened to be labeled x, right? And named x, which is kind of unfortunate, but. So that gives us a binding, right? That's gonna be our substitution. So it returns this binding x chain, right? And that's added to the substitution so far. So this substitution now, it's not empty anymore. It's got x chain in it, okay? So it returns that, returns that updated theta, leaves memory. Okay, back to the unify instance that was waiting for it. Now that unify instance, you know, we were waiting at a return, right? We were returning a, a um, let's see here, where were we? Sorry, I lost my place. We were returning right here. We were returning a unify var. So what did unify var return? That updated substitution. So that unify function returns that updated substitution. This guy right here was waiting for unify to return something. Well, it got what it was going to return, and it in turn was going to return uh, what was returned to it. So it leaves memory, returning that substitution. And then the one that started this entire mess at the highest level of the recursion tree, right? It was waiting, um, you know, passing. It's waiting, where were we? Right um, here, I was waiting for this guy right here, right? This, it was waiting at this return statement right here. So it's gonna go ahead and return what was returned to it, what was returned to it, the substitution. So it returns that substitution. Now, what was the substitution? There it is right there, X chain, right? So you can see right here, maybe I could have scrolled in a little bit better. And maybe I could have scrolled in just a little bit better uh, so you can see it. Right, that was the first result of ask vars x Jane, right? So we have a unifier. So that tells us that John knows Jane because we can fill in Jane for x and it makes both of those sentences the same. And so the unification is complete and we can then infer that uh, John knows Jane. Okay, that answers our original query, our original goal. You know, who does John know? Well, that's one of them, right? But there are other variables, so you can keep right on going, and you have to do unify for, you know, to see if John knows Bill, to see if John knows uh, the mother of himself, um, and then to see if he knows Elizabeth. So. Just wanted to, you know, optionally walk you through it, trace through that with you, just to give you a feel for how it works and maybe a little bit more detail than the previous video. In the previous video, you know, I just wanted to get through that. And Prolog's gonna do this for you. It's gonna do all of your unification for you, right? You're not writing the code for this. And, um, you know, you're, if you were to have to write your own inference engine from scratch, if you're writing your own version of Prolog, for example, well, then yeah, you'd have to do something like this. Um, to do the inference for you in first order logic, but you know you won't be required to do that in this class. So, but just for those of you who are curious to see how it worked at a at a deeper level, you know to, to wanted to trace through the algorithm, and you weren't exactly sure how to get started, what what meant what, uh, here's an example for you. Okay, um, again on test, you know expect nothing more than a true false multiple choice question at a high level, talking about you know what the purpose of the algorithm is for, you know that kind of thing. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, have a good night and we'll see you next time.